All right, so this is typically where you would be at that last stage of modeling the drone is all your pieces are in place. You could still add stuff after the fact, um, after the next couple of steps if you want to. So what I want to do is I want to um, lock everything into an actual object first, okay? So if I brought this object into Keyshot, which is where we're going to be going with this, Keyshot doesn't know what a... Um, subdivision surface is it doesn't know what a cloner is it doesn't know what the random is so it doesn't read any of those surfaces so we have to basically lock everything down to just geometry so um, we hit C on everything that is anything there we go so everything here has now been locked down to just geometry I shouldn't have anything in there I open everything up just to verify and everything looks like it's good Okay, now once I did that, let me shrink these back in. Uh, I'm going to delete the backups because I don't need those in this file. I don't need the random in this file. Okay, I'm going to save this as so I can incrementally save it. There we go. Um, I have to start organizing my stuff. Eventually this will be animated, so I want to make sure that everything is organized. Because of how the um, subdivision surfaces work and the mirroring works and the um, connections work, everything is kind of like a big mess right now. Okay, So just to show you, if I grab the propeller and I look at it, you can see what this looks like. It's rotating it like crazy like that. Actually, let me go back. I think this is one more. Five maybe. Nope. Still one more. Where was? Try to go back even one more file, just so I had all my stuff. Okay. So we have to um, lock all of our stuff into a piece of geometry first, so that it's actual geometry. And then we have to start breaking the part, the pieces apart. Come on. I'm gonna disable these symmetries and connects. I'm gonna try to disable the symmetries and connects. So now we're back. Okay. So I'm going to take this. I have a random cylinder in here for some reason. Okay, there's the main body. That's in there. Cool. And then this doesn't have my antennas or my other stuff on it. I'm just kind of going to skip around a little bit. Um, I'm going to take my symmetries here and drop these down, delete the main body, drop my propellers into this. Okay, so now we're back to where that was. I would go through, hit C on all of these. And now everything has been locked into place. So now as I go through this, you'll see that my um, propellers are all basically like locked together. So when I click on one piece of this, and just so you can see I move it, they're all stuck together. Because of how the symmetry works, it symmetries it but then it still keeps everything connected together. So what we need to do is break all that stuff apart so that they are separate pieces, okay? Now for some of this, it's not going to matter. Um, the wires that are, are, are inside here, in uh, my case, those move with this and they move with this and they move with that. So all of these pieces here, all the way down to this box and these wires, all move together and spin the propeller around. So all of those pieces, I need to be able to grab and rotate all of those around. This here, that doesn't move. So it doesn't matter what I do with that. That could stay as a locked piece like this. That is perfectly fine for that. So what I need to do is I'm gonna start labeling things. So this is gonna be motor housing. Let's see, this is my propellers here. If I open this up and open that up and open this up, you'll see what a huge mess this is. 
okay each one of my propeller blades because they've been cloned around and then symmetry to the other sides they are basically all linked together so what I need to do is go under mesh for each one of these and say polygon groups to objects and what that will do is it'll duplicate or it'll take that object and make four um, separate objects if I uh, am smart about this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all these objects out first there we go and then I will name them prop one and if I'm right about this it should keep the naming convention when I go to polygon groups to objects and then I open it up see it says prop 4 prop 4 prop 4 so if I didn't label that I would basically have um, subdivision 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 that many times so it just makes it easier when you're doing your stuff to see which uh, what numbers they are so now this one is one there's one there's one and there is one so you see how I can easily grab the first one in each group and now I know which ones go together and then I can do alt G to group them together and call this propeller one and I'll do the same thing in number two two and I'll do alt G again do not skip this step it is very important to make sure that everything is organized your stuff will not animate if you don't have it organized correctly four 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 you get the idea there okay now these that are um, still left these are just empty groups so those can just be deleted nothing highlights there um, then I'm gonna go to the next piece now as I do this just to kind of help keep my sanity I like to pull the pieces out so I know what is done this part is done so it's out of the group um, I could even make a layer and give it a color and that way I know that color is done so then when I go to this as I'm playing with that I can see what's done what's not so inside here I'm looking for these pieces of geometry these little icons uh, I'm gonna pull this out because the motor house is done I can just drop that out here oops don't put it inside there it's going to be right on it there we go now motor house is out drag it to the bottom I will color it purple these pieces here will also need to be um, separated so I go to mesh I go to uh, conversion poly groups to objects if I leave it like that where it says subdivision surface that one watch what happens when the naming convention comes up see how they're all subdivision surface 1.1.2.3.4 it's very confusing oh yeah so give it a name um, don't call it subdivision <laughs> motor now um, I know on mine for whatever reason I get a bunch of extra pieces so I'm going to highlight all my stuff here I'm going to try to highlight all my stuff there we go and I'm going to optimize it and then I'm going to go back to my object mode and then I'm going to go back to my mesh and I'm going to go back to my conversion back to here yep I still get a bunch of stuff so for whatever reason, I maybe I have some bad surfaces inside here or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to delete everything that's not important or just pull out the stuff that is important. So I know that um, this here, this here, this here, and this there is all important stuff. So if I group those together just to separate them, pull them out here, now I can start to label these. So this will be motor one. Um, uh, I'll set that one down there. I'm gonna go counterclockwise with this. Motor dot two. Motor dot three. There we go. Motor dot four. Okay. So now inside each one of these propeller areas, I need to start making a group of each one of these propellers that will spin around. Okay, so this propeller here, propeller one, has all four of those pieces. So I want to take all four of those pieces there. I also want to take my motor for one and drop that in there, because that's all part of that same area, because I would grab this and ideally I would rotate it and everything would spin. 
Um, and then I would do the same thing for my other ones. Where are my other propellers? Right there, propeller two, three, and four. There we go. So I'm gonna drop these down. And for whatever reason, it wants me to drag them up, close the windows, then drag it down, whatever works. Those are all purple now. Uh, motor two will go into that one. Okay, this is actually propeller um, four. This is propeller two. Because again, I'm going counterclockwise from the first one I'm at. It helps keep your sanity if you keep that straight. So two, three, four. Okay, now everything else that was inside of this symmetry group here. Oops, not that one. Uh, yep. Everything else that was inside this symmetry group motor right here, you can see are just these flat planes. And if I look at this, I don't even see those on here. Like if I undid that, I don't see where they're at. So in my case, they really don't serve a purpose. So I'm just going to delete them. They don't really do anything. So I could just get rid of them. Um, this here is nothing. If I move it, nothing happens. So I can delete that. This is all the wiring that's inside. So again, I have to fix that. And that's the top. So let's fix the top first. So I'll grab this and I'll call this prop tip. Same process, polygon groups, the ob groups two objects. There is one, this is four, that's two, and that's three. I'll drop that into each one of these. Tip two, prop two, four, and one. And put those two together and put these in order. Great. Okay. So we don't need the prop tip group. We don't need this. So we can delete that. We can not delete that yet. All right. Now this one's going to be a big one because this is all of my coils. Once I convert this, there's going to be like a billion things. So um, I'm going to do the conversion. I have to grab all these pieces first. Polygon groups to objects. I don't care what they're named in this case because there's so many of them. Now there's that many all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo this. Oops. Hierarchy. There we go. And then I'm going to just marquee this area, group it, and that will be um, wires one. And then I'm going this way, group them, and that will be wires two. Where's that group at? Oops, get out of there. There's that one. Group it. Wires three, and then this one. Group it. And then all this extra stuff here is stuff that maybe I didn't click. Somehow it didn't get selected. Yep. That's odd. Uh, let me make sure that my tool settings are good. So there's wires one. Okay. All right, let's do this again. Group that, wires one. All right, let's just pull everything out of a group. For some reason, it just got mix mixed up. So I'm going to say, um, delete without children and what that does is just deletes all the parents of the group but not the children in the group there we go so any one of these that still has a little plus sign next to them that'll get rid of that so that one 
on me. Get these without children. And you can see how many of these there are. It's ridiculous. Try that. Okay, so I grab all these. That's not everything. Why aren't you grabbing everything? Tolerant modeling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna grab all that. I'm gonna group it all. There we go. Wires one. Grab these. Group them. Two, grab these, group them. Somewhere in the list will be wires three. And I'm assuming that these are just little pieces of nothing because there's nothing. Delete that, and then I must have accidentally duplicated this at some point, and that's why I'm getting these extra ones. All right, so you're just going to go through that same process and just kind of yeah, see, I deleted all those extra pieces and everything's cool. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these, drop them into the propeller group that is appropriate for them. Number one, number two, number four, number three. Okay, this area looks like it's empty. I'll turn my solo off, delete that. Here is my propeller. There's nothing there, so I delete that. Here's my motor house, that's good. Here is my null, don't need that. Here's my subdivision surface, that's the body. Here's a random, don't need that. Okay, so now I would have legs in here too. I may have an antenna, I may have just random pieces, uh, guards, whatever it is, inside there. So now all of my stuff is done. Just to make sure it's all purple, I'll just make it all purple like that. All right, so now what I can do is um, make sure the pivots are in the right spot. So propeller one, if I rotate it, you can see how it spins around propeller one. That's exactly what it should do. If I get any kind of weird motion like that, that's stuff I wanna fix, okay? So it doesn't, propeller one works perfectly right like that. If I go to propeller two, you can see where it's pivot is, it's way over here. That's not how it's supposed to spin. Same thing with three, same thing with four. All the pivots are right there because when I made the first one, they all originated from that spot. So I just have to go to each one individually, go to mesh, axis center, and then hit axis center and say execute. Uh, include children, use all objects, yes. What? What are you doing there? Uh, there we go. Uh, sometimes this doesn't play nicely like I want it to. Come on. So what I do is I hit the L key, and then I can just move the pivot over to that point. So I'm gonna go to the top view, and just move the pivot right to that center. So if I zoom in, right where the center of this is, that's where it should be spinning from. Right there, sweet. So I hit L again, I go to the rotate tool, spin it around, works perfectly. Then I go to number three, and I do the same thing. Now the reason that the pivot tool wasn't working initially is because it probably has some object in there that is in the group, but it's like really far away. So no matter how many times I click that button, it still thinks it's centering the pivot, even though it's not. Um, and I'll show you, I saw it kind of on a, uh, the other one. And we could snap this, but it's not terribly uh, necessary in this case, as long as we get really close. Let me 
line that up right there. Okay. All right, so let's test it out. So we go to the rotate tool, we rotate it around. Oops, hit L first, there we go. So you can see that little dot right there. That dot is what is causing it not to line up correctly. And that dot is something. It's in wires. Oh, it's my wires group, that's what it is. It's not going to show up, uh, nothing will show up there, so we can just ignore it. All right, so I'm going to reset my rotate, go to number four, and do the same thing. So I hit L, go to my move tool, move the pivot over here. There we go. Sweet. So now that, if I hit L again, there we go. Now that'll rotate perfectly. Okay, so now that my propellers rotate correctly, um, I want to then take every single piece I have here and group it all together and just call this drone. Okay, because what I want to be able to do is every part that would move has to be uh, grouped correctly so it can move separately. So the propellers themselves will be able to spin around and then the whole body needs to move too. So I need to make sure that everything is grouped so that as I move the body upwards, everything goes with it. Okay, so now this part is done for setting it up. So I'm just going to save this again. Okay, so now what I need to do is go through and start doing the texturing part of this. So what I'm going to do, because everything is nicely organized here, this part goes a lot quicker. I'm going to create a material. And when we get to key shot, we want to have a separate material for each area. I can leave it just like this where it says gray material or white material, but it's hard to see what I've assigned stuff to. So what I like to do is just give it some uh, super bright color. So I turn the color off and reflectance and just go to luminance and just give it something crazy. That's a pretty obvious color. So if I go to my um, blades here and I just grab all the blades. and I drop this on them, they'll have that bright color, perfect. I don't need to do any UVs for these or any manipulation, I'm simply just gonna put a flat color on them when I get the key shot, so there's nothing fancy I have to do. So uh, let me give this a name, so I'll call this blades. I'm gonna hold alt and duplicate it, sorry, control and duplicate it, and then I'll call this one motor, and I'll give that a different color and each one of these items that would be a different material, I'm going to assign a different um, color to it inside of cinema. So each one of these has that on there. I'm gonna drag another copy. I'll call this one motor housing. Give it again a different color. Doesn't matter what, just something. Because these are all linked together, I can just grab one and assign it. Call this wires. Uh, this one's gonna be easier if I just go through here and just control click each one of these wire groups and then drag this onto one of those. Or drag this onto the wire group and this other wire group. All right, and then we just have the tip part left. Uh, prop tip. Okay. All right, so that's it for all the pieces that are gonna get just flat materials. Now again, you'll have other stuff on here. This is just a simplified model. Um, now for the body of this, I'm still going to copy it, um, but instead of having this um, flat coloring here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Photoshop and just create a quick texture, okay? On the drone body itself, I want you to have a couple labels on it. So 
So I don't care what you put on there. You can put your name. You can put um, Austin put snowflakes on his. Whatever you want to throw on there, I just want you to see this process. Again, these things are going to carry over to further assignments and further um, things that we'll be doing in the class. So I want you to be exposed to them so you know how to do them. So I'm going to a new document. You could do Illustrator 2. This is obviously just quicker to do it in Photoshop. Uh, 4,096 pixels by 4,096 pixels. And what you're going to do is just create a label sheet. So I'm going to call this just Sarcona. And make this huge. So you can pick a font. I don't need to pick a font. You guys know how to pick fonts, so just because I know that pick a font. Yep. Uh, if I want some stripes in here, then I can just add some stripes. Okay. So we'll just use that. You can design this however, like I said, you want, as long as it has um, some stuff on there. So I'm going to drop these textures as a Targa image. Into my folder. Now I have inside here already these ones I created. It's Arcona Drone, it's got some dashes, and it has these stripes. Same process, it just took more time to do it. So now I'm going to click on here and I'm going to load in my labels. Okay, so I loaded in the labels. I'm going to assign this to the body and I'm going to rename this body. Okay, now I need to place where these things are going to be um, connected to. Right now it's just kind of randomly positioned. So if I shrink everything here and I grab the body. Um, I'm going to switch over to my UVs. This is the only part that we have to do any kind of UV on, but it's much simpler than the other one was. Same process as far as grabbing the faces. Make sure we are not only selecting visible items. And what I'm going to do is grab everything in here and just scale it down to a super tiny spot. Now whatever color I chose as my background in my texture for my label, that's the color of the drone. So if I want a different color, I would choose that different color inside Photoshop and make that background color blue or yellow or green or whatever color I want. Okay, so this gives everything one flat color. Now I can start to pick where things are going to be positioned. So I'm going to grab my other uh, picker here and just start highlighting some faces. So let's say right here, I want that to say Sarcona Drone. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit more than I probably need. That's good. I'm going to kind of angle my camera and then under the projection I'm just going to say frontal. And what that does is it projects it straight through. Now I probably did grab the back of that, that's not a big deal, I'll just adjust that later. Uh, but I'm just going to move this now so that I can see the Sarcona drone popping in right there. Now probably on the other side, yep there's the other ones. Like I said, not a huge deal because I can always grab those faces. and then shrink them down, and then again, stick them back into that corner where they belong. Okay, so there's Sarcona drone right there. So now I can grab this again. I'll make sure I have visible only on this time. And if I want some stripes, now I can just grab an area where I want some stripes. Um, again, I'll line up the camera to this. I'll say frontal, and then I'll just move this to where my stripes are. Now if you look at it, I missed this face here, which caused that to obviously not look correct. So I'd have to go back and reselect it if I wanted to you know, make that look exactly perfect. Um, if I'm not too concerned with it, then I don't have to worry about it. Um, for this lecture up here, I'm not too concerned about it, but you would be. Okay, so you do that same process for anything else you have in your scene. If I had those little vents that were on mine, I would go to an area here, I would grab some faces, that kind of lined up the camera I'll go to frontal I'll shrink it down 
and then I'll move it on top of where the vent is. There we go. So now I have that vent. So now I'm done. So I can jump back to standard. So now I've laid out some basic uh, positioning of my UV. So I have some basic textures on there. I have a little vent. I have a little stripe right here. Then I have Sarcona drone right there. So now everything as far as the texture is set, everything as far as organization is set, I'm going to increment and save again in case I screw up. Now I want to create an animation. Part of this will be done inside of uh, Keyshot. Part of this will be done inside of Cinema. The um, takeoff part, the lifting off the ground part will be done inside of here. All the propeller spinning will be done inside of Keyshot. Okay? I so, mm -hmm. my, my propeller is lifting and turning. Would that be done in Keyshot or? Uh... That'll be done in Keyshot too, yep. Um, now for yours, you obviously have to make sure that you have those pivots in the exact spot you would need one for this and then one for the propeller spinning, right? Um, so I'm going to animate this. Now this is going to be a 180, 50, sorry, 150 frame animation. Okay, that'll give us five seconds of animation on here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to my drone. I'm going to set some keyframes here so it's on the ground. I'm going to go up to about 60. I'm going to set more keyframes exactly on the ground. A drone cannot just take off the second the propeller starts spinning. It has to ramp up, and then when we hit the up button on the controller, then it starts lifting off the ground. Okay, so we have two seconds of basically propeller starting to spin, and then after the two seconds, then it starts lifting up off the ground. Okay, so this to here is nothing. Nothing happens in those two seconds. Now at, let's say, 90, we've lifted off the ground. And then we've rotated a bit. Now my pivot's off a little bit here. Um, it should really be centered. Let me undo that. I'm going to hit L. I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm just going to put that right there. There we go. Okay. So I L again. And then I'll go back to my drone. I'm going to delete these keyframes and just get him back to where he was. So I'm just clicking down here in the timeline until those go away. Come on. There it is. And then I should be able to reset this back to zero. Yep, he's a happy camper now. Cool. All right, so let's reset those keyframes again. So keyframes here, rotates here, go up to 60. Same thing. Go up to 90. I'm going to pull them up a little bit. And when they come off the ground, if you've ever seen them, they kind of like wobble. It's not a perfect takeoff. It's kind of like a little shimmy upwards. Um, we'll set some more keyframes. I'll go up to 120. I'll move it up even more. I'll give it another wobble the other way. I'll set some more keyframes. Okay, so now I hit play. Nothing happens. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, if I didn't like any of those, I can grab the keyframes down here and just pull them this way, pull them that way to speed them up or slow them down. I could delete the keyframes, override the keyframes, whatever it is I need to do, okay? I'll go to 150 and I'm gonna pull it this way a little bit, pull it up a little bit, rotate it some, and then set, again, another row of keyframes. Okay, don't set too many keyframes. If you set too many, it's just going to look haywire. Even this transition I know is going to be horrible. I'm going to have to fix it. So nothing happens for two seconds. It lifts off the ground. Like that was too abrupt of how it changed direction. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to go to... on this keyframe and I'm gonna say spline where's my pen tool hmm. I'll adjust it a different way so I'm gonna go here and just pull this back some that worked 
I can go in the graph editor uh, and tweak it. But I just don't want to get into that. I don't know why my pen tool isn't showing up. I have something clicked probably. Now even this keyframe as it comes up at 90, maybe I'll pull that one forward a little bit. There you go. Okay, so that looks pretty smooth as far as what it's doing. No movement, comes up, and then flies that way. All right, that works. All right, so I'm going to increment and save again. There we go. Um, inside of oops, Keyshot, if I go to import, it will let me import my drone. So I don't know, I forget what number I'm on, uh, 12. So if I go to number 12 and I open this, um, it will bring in all my stuff. So I wanna say center of the geometry, snap to ground. Um, everything else should be good. Assign material from library, import, yep. Now it may give you this, cannot load label. That's no big deal, I just ignore it, okay? Um, I wanna check on a couple things. One, I wanna make sure that I want to make sure that the animation came over. So again, nothing for two seconds, and then it lifts off the ground and then starts moving. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do. I'll pull that over some more so I can see the full five seconds. Um, the controls for zooming in and out is the same thing. It's Alt and then right mouse button. Okay, so that works good. Um, I'm gonna go to my. Uh, over here on the right, let me close these just so you can see how to get these back open. Under a window, you would go to project um, materials. That would open up the right side, which would show your project and materials in your scenes. Any one of these opens up this right side and all those other buttons are right here at the top. And then window library would open up the left side, which is materials, colors, any one of these, again, opens up that side. Um, so I'm going to open up this. This is just like you saw inside of Cinema where we have everything listed. So I'm going to go down to my propeller and what I want to do is test it out. I want to see if my propeller will actually spin. If it doesn't spin then I need to go back. I also want to check out my texture, make sure my texture works and then I'm going to go back if it doesn't. Okay. Um, so I'm going to right click on my propeller and I'm going to add an animation here. So if you had something fancier than just it spinning you may have to do a position and a rotation and a whatever. So I'm gonna do a rotation only. You'll see how it drops it in. This is how it sets up the timeline, similar to like After Effects where you just have like, there's the animation. And then we just specify here how many degrees we want this to rotate. Go crazy higher than you think it would need. Like that's 100,000. That's 100,000 rotations. Now for two seconds, that's a lot. Uh, I do not want it to rotate that much in two seconds. So I'm gonna make this five seconds. I'm going to look at it and what's wrong with that? <laughs> it's going the wrong direction. Okay. So I'm going to switch my axis. Right now it's going on the X axis, which is causing it to flip. I switch it to Y. I hit the play button and now it's spinning correctly. The animation here is not like you would see inside of Cinema or After Effects. You don't set a keyframe and set a keyframe and it interpolates. You basically say, I want to drop in a rotation animation and then you specify values and it just punches it in. Okay, so that seems like that's working. So the animations are working. Um, the propeller animation's working. Now let me check my texture. So before I go any further, I check the texture. I know that this body one is the one that's having an issue. So see how it brought in, let me scoot this down. It brought in all my materials right from cinema already linked up. So now I just need to go to the textures tab, double click this diffuse and pick my label. And then spin around. Don't hold Alt when you spin around here. I want to verify that it came in correctly. Um, I can see my grill. I can see Sarcona drone. I can see my lines, exactly where I put them. If they weren't, something went wrong in cinema. I need to go back, make sure everything is cool there, then come back into here. For whatever reason, the first time I did this, um, for the demo I showed, I think last week or the week before, I had to basically just save the scene as a brand new cinema file, and then it worked. It did not like me incrementing and saving. This time it's working fine. Okay. Cool. So I know that the textures work. I know that the animation works. So I'm ready to move on to actually like finalizing some of my stuff. So I'm going to take this uh, back to scene. 
I'm going to go back to my propeller animation. And this is kind of what's neat about this is that once you have an animation, so there's my propeller rotating in the background, the crazy one, I can right click and copy it, go to my second propeller, and then paste that animation in. So I'm going to say paste animation. I'll go to number three. I'll go to the animation. I'll paste the animation. I'll go to number four. Animation, paste animation. Okay. So now if I hit play, I should see, whoops, zoom out a bit. All right, now there's one thing that I do want to adjust. All the propellers are spinning in the exact same direction. They typically would not spin in the same direction. The, these two spin in one direction, and then these two spin in the opposite direction, and I believe that's how it's set up. Um, so all I'm gonna do is, because I have these numbered, I know that four and two are across from each other. I just click on four and make this a negative. And then I go find twos, and then make that negative. So now those two blades should spin opposite. It's hard to see, but it's doing it, okay? There we go, perfect. All right, so now I'm done with the animation part. I can close the animation part. I'm done with that. Oh, um, I'm not done with that. Let me get that back. Animation. Um, I do want to change one thing. I do want to make sure that my motion for this is easy in, ease in. So I didn't set that, so I can just click on each one of these and just make sure it's set to ease in. That way the blades just don't start spinning crazy fast all of a sudden they actually like ramp up and speed and start spinning Zooming. cool all right so now i'm done with that animation what was that cool all right so now i can go into all the other materials and start assigning materials because they already have a material assigned to them um, with the exception of the body we can do anything we want to the other ones i can come over here into this uh this library of materials and I could say metallic paint, I want this to be on top of this. And because they're the same materials, Keyshot automatically pick, finds them and assigns it to all four of them. So I don't need to go through and grab each one of those and assign it. It automatically knows based on what I have done. It eliminated the one that was over here and just replaces it with that new one. So very uh, quickly, we can go through and assign some materials to this. Uh, so here's red gloss. And I'm picking some weird colors. Don't hold down Alt when you're um, tracking, when you're moving left and right, or when you're spinning around. You do not need to hold it. Only when you zoom, you hold Alt and you right click. Uh, let's go with plastic. <coughs> or sorry. You can also search here. So if you wanted copper, there you go. Here's copper. I'll assign it to my wires. Now my wires have that copper in there. Oops. My blades, I want a plastic, so I'll type in plastic. Uh, the white's kind of losing it, so let's go with that. That's cool. I like that one. You can change the colors too. So I put yellow on here. If I double click the object, it brings it up. And then you can just pick a different color. I'm just going to desaturate this some. And I'm going to get rid of this cloudy. I'm just going to put plastic. There we go. All right. That's satisfactory. All right, so now for the body, I'm gonna double click that. And here I can change this from advanced to um, whatever. So let's say I did car paint, where are you at? Metallic paint. There we go. So we'll get some neat shininess on there. We can play with the different color of this. We can Go down to the clear coat and add more clear coat to this so it's extra shiny. Sweet. So there it is. Okay. So as far as texturing, that's all we have to do. We're assigning basic colors to the objects in Cinema, giving some labels to the body inside of Cinema, bringing it all into here, and then doing the final texturing.
okay and the reason we assigned the basic materials is so that we had everything already kind of segmented so it's simply just dragging and dropping it makes your job like a hundred times easier um, especially for when you get into doing this for a living your boss comes and says I want these propellers changed to a different color you just change that one item or you drop a new one in there um, eventually you would have your own library that you would use and you'd be pulling from that okay um, now we can go to um, environment and we're gonna be doing two things so one of them is gonna be a still image of this item inside of this white background so a high-res still image inside here so I'm going to go to my interior or my studio ones and the default is this um, startup one which is right here startup right there um, you can use a different one if yours shows off better in a different area like this one um, the blades have some nice contrast on them, so they pop a little bit more than they did in the previous one so I may want to use that one okay um, some of these are just gonna look horrible on yours like that looks just really disgusting Go back to that one, and that's how easy it is. Just drop it on there. Oh, I didn't want that one. I want this one. Cool. All right. So I like the way this looks. Now for my still image, I want to um, I want to have my animation playing. So I'm going to go to my animation. I'm going to go to let's say about here where the where it's the blades have kicked up a bit, and I'm going to go to my um, render and I'm gonna turn on motion blur and what we should see is the blades because they are now spinning and they're animated will now kind of fuzz out a bit okay that's what we want them to happen so that it looks like they're actually spinning super fast when we do our rendering for this okay if I double click this window it's maximized this is a, a stupid thing inside of uh, Keyshot I'm gonna go to my image and this is basically like the resolution that I'm working with right here if I set this to um, our end resolution is 3000 by 3000 by 2400 you can see that it doesn't let me go to 3000 I just typed it in and nothing okay because this screen is locked it doesn't let me do it once I unlock it then I can type in 3000 and it gets me closer why didn't you go there oh because my resolution there it goes <laughs> So now that worked, obviously I can't have it go to 3000 because it would actually go to 3000 on my screen. So what I have to do is find some representation of that. So if I go to 600 by 480, this gets me basically like the proportions of that same 3000 by 2400. It's weird how it does it, but that's what it does. Um, there's also under this image, you can do some effects. So if you wanted to do any uh, blooming of your highlights, basically anywhere there's a highlight, it'll make it a little bit uh, shinier. Uh, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of blooming on this. Uh, it's a tiny bit. Um, let's take the radius down some. Let's take this up. Yeah, not much. Uh, I could also vignette. So if I wanted to add a little vignette on here, I can also add some chromatic aberrations, which would kind of, basically it shifts the pixels around. I don't need that. All right. So there's my final-ish image. Um, I can also play with the camera's perspective, so I can make that, let's say, 25. So I get more of a dynamic pose versus, I hit the button, come on, there you go, versus 90. 90 makes it look really flat. At 10, it makes it look like way too much. 25 is an okay number. Okay, so I'm gonna try to find a cool angle for this thing to be shown. That's cool. I'm gonna go to my uh, render, and I'm gonna say render. And here's where I set up everything that I want to actually render out. So I would specify in here, this is Sarcona drone render. I put this where I want this to go. Here. Renders, yes. Uh, I want it to be a TIFF. I want it to be 3,000 pixels by 2,400 pixels, which is an 8 by or a 10 by 8 at 300. I can go to my options and pull this up to 128. That'll just mean it's a higher quality rendering. If this is lower, this will be a horrible, disgusting, blocky mess of a render. 
okay and then when I'm done I would hit render and then it would go through and render it out I'm not gonna do that now because it might take like a half hour for this image to render out okay so that's part one of this is making a still image the other part is animating the um, the rendering out of this the um, animation so here you can use an exterior scene or an interior scene whichever one you find that you like again you just drag it in there um, my resolution here is going to be the 960 by 540 so I'm gonna set this up so that it looks good I'm gonna bring up my bring open my animation Oops. When I did that, this reset, so I could reset this back to 960 by 540. I have to click my lock button so it doesn't change. There we go. And now what I want to do is just verify that he doesn't come out of the scene. There we go. Actually, right there is fine. He comes out a little bit. That's fine. And flies away. Okay, so that's good. Hmm. Again, you can change this. You can drop in a different one. Rotate that around, and then he'll fly, obviously, a different direction. You can also go to the environment, and you can rotate the environment so that you can basically get it lined up to where you want him to be kind of flying towards or away from. I like the one I originally had, so I'm going to drop that. There you go. So he starts off there. And flies towards the camera. All right, so same process here. So I'm going to go to render, and under this one, instead of still image, I go to animation. Specify my resolution 960 by 540. Don't render that out at the 3000 because again, it'll take a ridiculous amount of time. The entire duration. We don't want a video output. We want frames, and then the rest of this is the same setup. So it'll go into my renders folder. I'll call this uh, where it says untitled. we go I hit render and then again it goes off and does its rendering thing okay um, I may also want to right now it's on basic mode I may want to make this on product mode if I want better quality you may see a little bit of a difference um, performance mode is definitely you lose a lot of stuff basic mode you get the shadows at the, on the ground and then product you're gonna get a little bit more um, you could also go into um, down here and start turning other stuff on so if I go to performance mode you'll see that it just turns off self shadows global illumination and ground illumination with basic on it turns on self shadows with product on it turns on all three of these okay and if you had jewelry then they would turn caustics on okay um, you could also add lights to your scene if you wanted to so inside here is a light so you could actually take this and Let me go to my scene. I'm going to go and create a camera at studio, geometry view. There it is. Add geometry. So I can add a cube. Come on. Oh, I'm dra dragging the wrong thing. There we go. So I drag this onto the cube. And then I double click the cube and I go to its power here. And I just crank this up. You'll see that this cube is actually like lighting up the scene. And that's something I could even like parent to my object or put it inside that same group so that as he moves, it goes up. Um, if you remember from the one that I showed before, I had some lights on the bottom of mine, and that's what I did with it. So there's the blade spinning up, two seconds he's not doing anything, then he lifts off the ground. You can see the little lights underneath, like that. Okay, so by the time you're done, you should have a video. Take this into After Effects, render it out, make it into an actual QuickTime movie, and then you should have a still. This one I added depth of field, you don't have to add depth of field. Again, it's just something that's going to add more render time. 
to your bucket. Cool. All right, so that should finish up the drone. That should take you all the way from finishing up the modeling, texturing, organizing, animating it, bringing the key shot, rendering it out, okay? Um, it seems like a lot, definitely, but the steps are pretty quick once you start going through them. All right, any questions on this? All right.